Hey class, I am here to give you the second half of our lecture today, which will be discussing your library assignment. We left off discussing periodicals, which are magazines, journals, and newspaper articles. You are going to be required to find two out of the three of those different sources. And the best place to find those sources, at least for the purpose of this assignment, is through our SMC library. And I showed you that that toolbar is right here. You simply click on library. And if I'm looking for journals, magazines, and news articles, well, goodness, maybe going right here would be great. So I'll simply click on that. And this pops up for us, which is a listing of all of our databases here, or at least categories for those databases. So these are all databases. This is reference databases. So um, if you're looking for an encyclopedia, that's where this information would be. Art and architecture, if you have a specific topic in mind that falls under one of these categories, I would encourage you greatly to look at that. It's awesome. Uh, otherwise, simply look at all databases. This Academic Search Premier, which is the first here, is an excellent resource to find multiple types of journals, magazines, and newspapers. So how do we start to search for our materials? The first thing is to come up with a narrowed focus of what to search for. And that's why I said for you to have your thesis with you so that you have specific keywords. Um, so if you're talking about um, if you are talking about, let's say, oh, let's say I'm Santa Monica College, right? And my first main point is the history. I could do Santa Monica College and history, and it is going to search for these terms and put them together. So let's see what that generates. And, ah, yay, fantastic. So that helped us get down to 10. I wonder if I took away history, what would have happened? Ah, 238. Well, that is just way too much for the time that I have. Let's go back to history and start to explore some of the options here. Now, how do I know what type of information I have and how do I gain the most information? That is what this toolbar is for over here. Right now, I have full text marked, and if you don't have that on your computer, I would really encourage you to do so because that will allow for you to get the entire article. Otherwise, it's a bad, bad uh, feeling when you get there and you realize it's only the abstract, which is simply a little keyword idea of what the article is about. It's so close, but it's so far away. So put full text there. We'll come back to scholarly journals soon because that is one of the resources that we need to use. But if you see here also this publication date is really great because it allows for you to have one of the criteria of the radar that we keep an eye out for. There's an idea that this is irrelevant in regards to the time period. Because any research that you have, you want it to be more recent than not, unless you're talking about something historical. But if you're talking about something persuasive, having recent information, statistics, and uh, uh, data is going to be key in order to persuade your audience, to build your credibility, to show that you are honestly trying to present them with the best and most effective or relevant information. The other thing that you can see down here is that this lists all results of the periodicals, but in here we can also limit it down a bit. Journals, magazines, reviews, hmm, journals, again, interesting. Let's see what other things we have. I guess that's it. So in the case that we need a magazine, let's go ahead and click here and see what we can, we can gather. So this magazine it says there's two, but it looks like there's one. Oh, I guess it's a duplicate copy. Okay. I can click on the title, Schwarzenegger's Speech Causing Friction in Alma Mater. Good for Santa Monica College. And what I would do is I would encourage you to click on a full PDF text, but only after you look at this information here. The great news is that this gives you all the data that you will more than likely need to complete the assignment part here, you need the author, the title of the magazine, the title of the article, the year, the volume, the issue, the page number. So let us look at some of this information. We see that we have the 
a title that the publication is Community College Week. It, this was the date that it was distributed. This is the volume, the issue, the page number. And it looks like company or entities, the Animal College. Okay, it doesn't look like it has an author per se. So let's go ahead and go to the full PDF text. And this may give us some information that we don't have. Real quick though, this gives the abstract and almost every report is going to have this abstract. It's going to give you a brief um, <coughs> look as to what the article is going to talk about. So you don't have to waste your time if you don't think it's going to be usable. So here's the full PDF text and this gives you the entire article. Um, as it is here, which is great and you can access it. But let's see to the top, has anybody written this? No. So you're going to, if you don't have an author, as a reminder from the outlining video that I gave you, you will simply say something like, a staff writer for Community College Week, a magazine published in 2005, wrote an article titled Schwarzenegger causing speech causing friction at alma mater. It states that, right, and then you can go in and give some information that you wanted from them. Uh, so that would be a great way to find this information. But let's go back to this detailed record because this will take me back to this page where we just were. And over here on this toolbar is are some really great resources. You can email this article to yourself, and that's really helpful, but make sure that you are sending the detailed citation and abstract, or a brief citation, or a brief citation, etc. So this is going to give you information. If it asks you if you want the PDF, say yes, because oftentimes if this is the only thing here, then it isn't going to send you the PDF. You have to make sure that the PDF is also available there. And you'll simply put your email in here and note that the information will come from this email here. And then you can send that to yourself. The other thing that you can do, what? You can say, I want a citation also sent to me in MLA format. How amazing is that? So we go to like a me. Oh, no, no. What's my name? underscore Amanda at smc.edu and I'm simply going to send it to myself and I'm like, yay! So now let me go back, oh, that's that account and I'll go over here and we'll look at it real quick just so that you can see all the fun. Let me move myself. And here, and email, and signing in. Oh my goodness, there it is. I can't wait. All right, so this information is, is here, and then what it has given me is the PDF, so I can download that into my computer if I want. There it is, it opens right up. And then the other great thing is that it is giving me this works cited part. And what it is telling me is to pay special attention to personal names, capitalizations, and dates. Because that is constantly changing, especially if you're doing like an a MLA or an APA. Um, this is awesome. The, uh, yep, nope, that's right. Um, it's a bit different. So that would be your citation. All you have to do is copy and paste it. The other way, if you don't want to email it to yourself and you don't want that information, then simply go right back to here and you hit cite and this amazing little reference pops up as well. And you can simply scroll down. Let's see where it is. Ooh, MLA, yes, I would love that one. And all you're going to do is copy and paste. But everybody's always like, well, how do I know how to cite it? Well, if I just click on MLA right here, it takes you to the MLA style guide that you can take some information from and figure out how to cite things right here as well. And it has so many different resources. It's kind of, it's not kind of, it is fantastic. The last thing that I wanted to show you was this resource here, which is called EasyBib. And many of you are probably already familiar with EasyBib, but it is a bibliography generating uh, application, I suppose. Um, and you would use the MLA style, which is free, and that's awesome. And 
it gives you different options of what to cite. So in this case, if you have a website, you can do it here or a book or a video. And you can simply put in like the ISBN or the title and it'll search for it. So like if I had a, a, the book like, um, let's see, uh, Intercultural Communication in Context, which is one of my texts from, um, oh, is it because I cited it wrong? That's amazing. Um, oh no, okay, it's here. Yeah, and this is the book that I use. So that's fantastic. And I just say, oh, cite this. And then it generates the citation. It gives me a little area to make sure that it's okay. And then if I need to put in any of this information, I do. And I simply create the citation. And then it provides it for me. And I can once again cut it, paste it, and create my own um, citation. So it's a really great website, EasyBib, if you wanted, if you didn't want to utilize. Uh, these over here. Okay, now let us see the next type of there we go, a periodical that we can find. So if we don't have a magazine, we're also going to need a a journal, correct? So let's go ahead and, and look at a journal here. Now this journal is not an academic journal and um, it is in Midwest Quarterly. So I think it's a journal for, interesting, voyeurism in the novel, in the, in the Lake of the Woods by Tim O'Brien. This doesn't look like anything that has to do, wow, Vietnam and Satanism? God. With, um, with Santa Monica College. So I'm going to go away from that. And let's instead, I don't even know how that one got in there, right? Let's instead go back to academic journals because that's what we want. So this says academic journals, but interestingly enough, if you notice, this is back. Did I push it? Oh, I did push it. That's why. Okay. Ah, there we go. And if you see over here on the left-hand side, it will say academic journal. And we can maybe... What are these titles? Santa Monica College in History. Huh. Doesn't really look like there are any academic journals. Let's go with Santa Monica College, period, and see if we can find any type of academic journal, right? So we will hit academic journals here. It's 48. And transfer readiness, a case study of former Santa Monica College students. How amazing. I wonder what this is all about, right? All right, the source is New Directions for Community Colleges. That's the name of the journal. And uh, here's the information that you're going to maybe need. And it looks like the publisher right down there is Wiley. Mm. There are your authors. Let's go ahead and look at the full text here, if we will. And here's going to give me the full, yeah, there it is, a great little journal article and it will go ahead and tell you how to cite it over here if you'd like to. So that is another way that we can look at the information. Now the last thing I want to show you over here before we finish up is um, if I was to simply put, where is it, all results. And so all results are here and we'll start to look at things like this. So um, I know that Hmm. I wanted to show you this. I'll show you what I'm trying to find here. If you're noting, there is a lot of use of the word periodical. A community college week seemed like it was also a what? A journal, right? And this looks like health and that, I just know, is maybe like a magazine. Art in America, I don't even maybe know what that is. But this is where you have to start to do a little bit more searching to ensure that your periodical is, and you have to make sure, you have to decipher what that periodical is, if it's simply there in general. Let me decide it there. Yeah, five institutions provide updates on campus. Uh, the Christian Science Monitor, let's do this one. I know that the Christian Science Monitor is a newspaper, 
And so I can see the information here again and the HTML full site, which is great. If they, you are having a difficult time finding a newspaper, you can always go to the database that is, in fact, solely for newspapers. So let's see what that will look like. And again, I have no clue how you go back and forth between these, so I'm going to just go right back in there, Journal, Magazine, Newspaper. I'm going to go to Journal and Newspaper Titles, and maybe I just want, I know where my newspaper is, or I know what I want to um, look at. But you can also see that these databases, or the e-resources are here, and this is the ones that it's going to go through. Um, if you wanted to as well. So it's like, I know that it is, let's go with like social sciences, right? And I want to look at, see if anything in the New York Times. Let's just see. Great, and we can look at any types of New York Times article um, that are going to be here, and I can go straight to the New York Times specifically and start to search through there to find information if I wanted. Um, and I can browse specific issues. And This is kind of a great resource too if you want to read a free newspaper because you don't want to subscribe so you can always do something like that. But regardless, if we are looking in our databases and you are trying to find some kind of newspaper, um, either make sure that you're clicking on the right hand side and if no newspapers appear you may need to search through that list of periodicals of all things because that will you'll start to see the difference of the names or the titles and that will indicate to you what those newspapers are so that is how we essentially are going to be using the databases and those are some great ways for you to easily cite your citations as well which I love. The only thing that I didn't show you however, let me go here, is that there are a couple databases that are going to be incredibly helpful for your persuasive speech and I want to make sure that I go show you those really quick. Mm, current biography. Ah, if you're talking about a person that's a great one. The Encyclopedia, Eric J. Store, blee blee blee, Military and Government, Ooh, national newspapers, that'd be a great resource to look at as well, right everyone? Yes, and haha, -ha. this is the most amazing website or uh, database for your persuasive speech it's called Opposing Viewpoints and Context. It'll be where I direct you to start exploring uh, persuasive topics if you don't know what you want to talk about already, but it is wonderful because it gives two sides and multiple sides more than um, of any relevant issue or topic today. So it not only gives you titles of areas that may be interesting and that are debatable, but if I was maybe going to say, okay, college campus safety, which you all know I have a good feeling about, and we can look through here to start seeing what they're talking about. Related topics, it could be crime or alcohol or drug abuse. It could even be what that's going to pop up with but the great thing that this comes to is that you can see that there's featured viewpoints and these are typically from experts in the field here's a bunch of information about statistics what survey of college aid female rape and sexual assault victims oh my goodness Co women's for college women's reasons for not reporting sexual misconduct what there's so many options right here are academic journals, here's audio recordings, and here are newspapers. It really l narrows down the focus for you. It's awesome. Here are the references that you could use. Here's magazines you could use. Here is a picture. Well, that's fun. And then here are websites that are effective and credible. So this Opposing Viewpoints website is amazing because even if you were going to see something here, um, what you're going to get generated from this is you are going to get all of this information that has been uh, approved and, and uh, edited. You're going to get a myriad of additional readings that you could of course reference and periodicals and it gives you a citation which is awesome. But the other thing that it will usually give you are these, um, what I 
did want you to see were the, in fact, opposing viewpoints. So let me show you one of those featured viewpoints. Um, oh, let's see. They have, typically, it'll show like you one side, the other side, the pro and the con, which is really fun as well. And I, of course, say fun because I think it's fun, but neither here nor there. Um, yeah, looks like it doesn't have it on this one, but if you were to search something like, which is a huge topic, and I would encourage you to narrow that, as, like huge, narrow it. Let's see what they have listed here. And giving us all this information as to what causes global warming and how do we address it and what the political issues that are surrounding it. I guess it's just doing it like so, but um, you will come across after exploring this that there are a good amount of pro and con options on here. And that's what's so awesome and relevant. And in a lot of these as well, it'll be like charts and graphs and here's a visual aid and it's pretty cool. So I encourage each of you to continue to explore these websites and just know that they, or sorry, these databases and know that they exist and know that it is um, going to be a great resource for you. So if you were looking to answer that final question, I would say uh, opposing viewpoints in context and then also the academic search premiere. Those are going to be great ones for you. I hope that this makes sense and how you will find your journal magazine article. Again, when you say, how would you cite this? I wouldn't say click easy bib. I would literally write out the citation. So please write out these citations for me and make sure that your second and third and fourth or any subsequent lines after that first one are always indented 0.5 because that is the criteria for a MLA work cited. And you can look at that on your first page of that reference sheet that I gave you about how to format a work cited page and how to format a paper. All right, everybody. There you go. See you soon.